Hello, this is Yontine again, Chapel Cottage Studio. Today we're going to have a bit of a change and today we're going to have a look at some still life in pastels. I took the photo of this little still life whilst I was wandering around the lanes, getting a nice walk in the sunshine. And I really like this arrangement of pots going up here. I love the little bowls with the plants. The whole thing can be turned into a very, very pretty picture. And we're going to do it in pastels because that will give us really bright colours, strong lines. And I just feel pastels will suit it. The more that you paint, the more that you're going to start to think which medium will suit which picture. So this one today is going to be in pastels. We're going to begin with a bit of composition and a bit of drawing out. And to draw out in pastels, I'm using a little piece of willow charcoal. That's the little burnt sticks, not the compressed charcoal, not the charcoal pencils. Again, I use the willow sticks because if I go wrong drawing, I can simply rub it away. And you can't do that with the other types of charcoal. Composition wise, let's think about what we want in our picture. And I think my pots are going to be right up against the side of the picture. I'm going to simplify them a lot. There's too many on here. This little pot is right in the middle of that one. So I'm going to move it over, which will give us a diagonal going down there. So let's begin with a little bit of drawing. So if I sort of start, start with this row of pots. And I may make them not so many. Let's start with the bottom one, which has a little angle, a little blip. This is going to give you some practice on ellipses, because there is an ellipse around the bottom of the pot. If I draw a straight line across there, you can see that the side goes up and it's a curve forming an ellipse. Some of these pots are stacked straight on top of each other, so I'm going to give myself a centre line. Then it's easy to bring out the next pot. Draw your ellipse, take it in, take the top in and the next pot. Draw your ellipse, take the top of the pot in. So we've got three pots stacked there. We don't need that side of them, which makes it a lot easier actually. Let's change the direction. Let's make our pots wobble a bit, which they don't on here, but this is the joy of drawing. Let's make the next one go at a bit more of an angle and let's change the pot a little. So our stack of pots is a little bit wobblier than the one in the picture. And the next one, that can go at a bit of a wobble as well, not quite as much. Different sort of pot, no rim. Then the next one is gonna go a bit straighter on again and maybe that's the top of them and the top of the pot goes up and over like that so the bottom by the time we get up here the bottom line is straight top line goes up and over oh do you know what I think that's too much ever so slightly there we are so take your time draw your first stack of pots remember that they have to fit over the top of the one underneath comfortably. Not too far, because this one is stopped by the pot underneath. So they just overlap it slightly where they overlap. You've got to imagine the pot underneath going inside. So that's our first step. In front of this little stack of pots, Let's have a bigger stack in front of them. Let's come in forwards a bit. Now this time you can see just inside the rims, which means that your ellipse is very narrow that way and your pot is very wide that way. And if you make this too wide, your pot will look like it's tipping forwards. So make sure you keep this narrow. It's a squashed circle. There are no points, no corners. It's a squashed circle. So I'm going to make a pot by there, bring it down. This is why we didn't need to do the backs of these. And another one that it's stacked inside. Make a bigger rim on that one. Come down and one more, I think. 
And again, all of these, you can just see the front of the ellipse. So there's the tiniest bit of a curve and you must make sure that it comes down further than this one in order to be on the bench. Otherwise, it's going to be somehow inside those. It's got to come down further. You've got to get the space between there and there. So we got some pots in front of them. Maybe we'll have a little bit of foliage sticking out in between. A little bit of weeds or something. There we are, there's the next bit drawn. Now up here, we're gonna decide where this big pot is gonna go. And I think, oh, we're probably possibly gonna come behind these with another one. I'm gonna put another pot in here first, behind those. A much bigger pot that you can see lots of. And this pot has got a nice label in it. Somebody's been planting something in there. So we'll, the same ellipse, an ellipse around the bottom. There is no corner by here. It's a curve, an ellipse around the bottom of the pot. Let's get that pot in. Let's put in that little one behind it as well. We're working our way through the picture. Now I can see my big pot wants to be about by here. Oh, it's going to disappear behind this. I'll move this over in the next gap. So there we are. There's the edge of the big pot and the rim and the curve underneath. We could even just do that half. We'll do that. And it's up to you whether you go further. And the base of the pot. And let's put that little one in front of it. Break the line. It's got to come down further than it so that it's in front of it on the bench and we know that we're going to have something going on in here there's another pot hiding behind oh i don't like that it's touching that one let's move it over there's another pot hiding behind there make it a different height to that one and once you've drawn a couple of these pots you know they get easier and that's going to have some foliage just going to give ourselves an idea when oh, there's a nice pot that's on a slant behind here. Let's put him in, that pink one. By there. Then we got to decide, are we going to have a bit of shed? Are we not? I think I'm just going to bring it, maybe a little piece of it, a wall by there. Look at this under here. Look at the angles. This side comes straight. This side goes at about 25 past. So we'll take the angle of that down there, split it up into a few of these. Think about it's going to come about level by there. Make it fan out. So there we are, we've got the staging that it's put on. There's an edge, another edge. You won't see that edge. And there's all our plant pots. Drawing done. Okay. Let's start putting some colour on now. So, I'm going to start with some of these pots at the front. My first pot is that I'm putting on is just a black pot, but I never use black. So I'm using this, it's a navy blue rather than a black. And I'm using it on the side here. I'm going to block in the whole of that pot with it. You can be really tough. You, now is the time if you want it a bit fatter or a bit thinner to put it on. This is lovely because once you've done your drawing, you're really colouring in. I'm not doing anything definite over here. That's going to be the edge of my picture and I want it to just sort of fade away. So there's my first colour. Over the top, I'm going to use some very pale yellow. Gorgeous, gorgeous colour. I call it sort of buttermilk yellow. That's going to give me highlight around the top. Little bit of light on this side. Drag it down here. And then let's go at, a, at an angle so that you've got a shadow remaining under there. And light on the rest of the pot. There he is done. I might bring a little bit of dark back through. I think this is a dark green, not a dark blue, but that's fine. Any dark colour is absolutely fine. Now, it might be nice to add a little bit of colour to it. I've got a nice bit of pink here. 
let's add a little bit of pink to that light. And I love this thing with pastel painting, with any painting, that you can put loads of colours in and your brain still sees black pot, which I find really, really nice. Let's put an orange pot inside it. Give it the rim. Come around here. Oh, here we are. This is a really, really hot orange I'm using. Make sure it goes right down, right inside that rim. Bit of colour. Highlight, whoops, around the top. I missed my ellipse there a bit. We'll not worry about it. Lighten that orange a bit on this side. Then I'm going to go back to my dark blue. Put a shadow under the rim and allow the shadow to come down on the, on the right hand side and maybe cover it with a little bit of that orange. There we are. Second pot on. Let's put another one of these black ones up above it. Doesn't matter if the dark colour you use is a navy blue, a very dark red, a dark purple, it doesn't matter as long as you've got the depth of colour. It's the tone that matters rather than the colour. Put a bit of this pale yellow on top, get a bit of light on that side of it, a bit more dark going under there. We are. We've got our first stack of pots. Really, really easy. There's a real dark in here. Make sure that the inside of the pot squishes right out towards the rim. And we might, again, just ring the changes on it a little bit. Put a different colour in. Don't be too worried about what colours you're using. They will all work. A little bit of highlight with a bit of white across those rims. And there's the first stack of pots done. Right, what I wanted you to notice as well, I'm not doing this in the traditional pastel way. The traditional way of painting pastels is to begin with the background and layer on top of it and then on top of that and then on top of that till you come to the foreground. But the way I like to work recently is to begin at the foreground and do the other way. Put your layers going back. And then as you paint each layer, you leave a little bitty bit of the background showing. And it's very, very nice and it unifies your picture. And also, by the way, this is Murano paper. It's a beautiful deep pink, gorgeous colour to go behind your pastels. So, should have said that at the beginning, but no matter, we've got it now. Next bit I'm going to put is this little bit of weeds coming out behind this pot. So I'm starting with my very dark colour. Again, not too bothered about what dark it is. I think this one, yeah, it's the same as that, same one. So I'm going to put in some leaves and I'm not that bothered what they're like. I just want a little bit of an impression of some leaves coming out from behind that pot. And having put them in in very dark, I'm going to go to a bright acidy green and I'm going to put some lights on them, but I'm going to leave some of the dark showing as well. And I'll put some bits in where there isn't any dark and you see they're going to come out much brighter where you're not going on top of the dark green or the dark blue or whatever you're using. And just a third colour, a little bit of bright colour. There's quite a lot of bright yellow, quite a lot of colours in this picture. Sometimes I do them with just three. This one's got a few. So we've got a little bit of plant or weeds or whatever coming in from behind the pots. Let's go back. Let's put these nice sort of pale bluey ones in. So these are behind it again, working my way back. Put in my ellipse for the bottom of the pot and the rim. And now I've got to sort of sneak through these bits. And I never worry about leaving those little lines of 
of background paper because they're really nice. Start with that colour and instead of putting light onto this we're putting dark onto it. So I'm adding a shadow underneath the top one, shadow around the top of the rim, shadow around the bottom of the rim and then I'll use a bit of white, bring up the top of the rim and a little bit of light at the front here. And there's one of the pots. You do want to try and get it even around here so you're creating an even edge. Oh, I didn't put my pale blue here, sorry. That's what I was using for the pots. Nice bit of pale blue. And I'm gonna work my way up them, do the next one. Fill in the body of it. Sneak in and around the, the greenery. Not worrying about leaving little tiny bits of paper colour. Very, very attractive. Bit of shadow around there, bit of shadow around the base. And with the light, a bit of white around there, bring up a bit of light on there. Now you can work your way through all those pots. Choose what colours you would like to use. I'm going to put a mixture of some orange ones, some of these, a bit of black. Maybe I'll have one that's just done in a brown. Like so. Okay. And then we'll have a look at the next bit. Right, I've finished up my pots. I've put one of those lovely dark orange ones. I've put a dark, dark blue or green covered with a bit of pale yellow and pink by there and I've introduced a slightly brighter orange oh, I'm talking rubbish, a slightly yellower orange on the top one just to ring the changes so we've got a nice sort of wobbly stack of pots let's carry on behind them, doing the one behind them so I think this one here, oh I think he should be orange so again start with the rim leave that tiny tiny little crack of paper colour showing which will look really nice remember that the ellipse at the bottom doesn't have a corner it's a curve fill it in I'm not blending any of this in by the way I never blend pastels in leave them as those beautiful strong pastel marks use my pale yellow Get a highlight on the rim. Sometimes it's really hard just finding the edge of the pastel to make a highlight. And come down the front of the pot. And we're gonna leave again that triangle of shadow underneath the rim. And where it goes into the other pots, I'm going to introduce a bit of dark, a bit of shadow. Notice that all these have got a bit of shadow as well on the right hand side. And what this bit of shadow is going to do is throw out the blue pots so you can really see them. So I'm going to darken that shadow under there and bring some in from here. And don't blend it in with your fingers. Instead, just bring this colour across and smush it over the top. Smush is technical term for today. There we are. Now, that one's got a white marker in it. Just colour it in. It's, it's just such a pleasure, pastels. It's just colouring in. And let's put a dark centre in the pot. Maybe there's a bit of something else happening in there as well. Maybe there's some other sort of label or something going on in there just to give it something different dark centre, shadow inside it, put that in with your dark colour and then we'll just bring up the rim around the other edge with a pail. So there's the next pot, working our way backwards, oh I think I'll put a black one by there. You never, of course, have to do what the photograph does. And even if the lady whose house this is saw this, she's not going to remember what colour pots she's got where. So don't worry about changing them. 
we might end up with some foliage in there. Let's put a rim. And a bit of light on one side, and there's another pot. There's a lovely sort of, oh, sorry. There's a lovely pink one here that really sort of jars against the rest, but I think it's gorgeous. So we'll put that in as well. It's just a nice different colour. So here's my pink. There's a lot of colours in this picture. And usually I'm always telling everybody, five colours is all you need. But you know, there are times when you can change that. I've also got a very dark red. You could alternatively use a brown or just whatever dark colour you've got to create a shadow in there. And a bit of light on the rim and going down under here. So we've got a nice higgledy-piggledy mixture of pots on the right-hand side of the picture. Now we're going to think about the next section.